Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India All right, uh, let us uh, uh, continue with our lecture series. Uh, this is uh, a different topic since we have seen uh, uh, all these 25 lectures before. And here we are talking about uh, uh, estimation ideas or observer ideas and all that actually. So, let us see if, uh, to begin with uh, little, little bit on linear quadratic observer and some sort of an uh, overview of state estimation. I am not talking about detail uh, derivations and all here, which we will do in less next couple of lectures anyway. Okay. Uh, but uh, here we will uh, see simply, uh, simply see some fundamental ideas behind this uh, LQ observer and it also turns out to be some sort of a Kalman filter, uh, whether you realize it or not actually. Okay. But uh, then will also gives uh, much more formalization of this uh, this state estimation technique, especially the Kalman filtering ideas. In next couple of lectures, however, in this particular lecture we will simply see what's the basic ideas and what are the mechanism uh, to operate it and all that actually. So topics: uh, motivation of state estimation. Why do we want to do that? Then LQ observer and some sort of an uh, overview of state estimation especially using Kalman filter which is very very popular it works for a lot of problem and things like that. Alright, so this motivation of state estimation first why do you want to do state estimation actually. Okay, first thing is uh, for state feedback control design we really need information about state and hence we need to do state estimation actually. And in practice uh, all state variables are not available for feedback and possible reasons can be non availability of sensors, sensors are simply not there or even if they are there, they can be sometimes quite expensive. Okay. For example, a seeker in the missile is typically very, very expensive. So, unless uh, you are really sure that everything else works, you do not put it there, but uh, you want to have some sort of validation before, I mean on that. So, preliminary launches and all typically are done with respect to radar data, not necessarily with respect to seekers. So, that is the reason the sensor is very expensive, we do not want to kind of just like that use it actually. Uh, sometimes the quality of the sensor is not acceptable because of the noise content, uh, especially if you see this uh, MEMS uh, level sensors which is uh, there, it will give you some data, some uh, some information about what is going on, but the information content is very noisy actually. Okay. So, when you have that obviously, you want to use that sensor okay, or maybe many sensors like that. But then we were to have a filter in the loop which will kind of extract the good information out of it actually. Okay. So, these are some of the reasons why you want to do. So, what is an estimation actually? What is the idea here? A state observer estimates the state variables based on the measurement of some of the output variables as well as the process information. Okay. So, process information means system plant model. It will use that uh, process information as well as the output of the sensors for for a finite uh, segment of time actually, just not at the one instant of time, but sequence of data it starts coming. Then from there it will, it will be able to kind of estimate the state uh, in a good way. So, applications of estimation is not just confined to feedback control, it is also you can think about uh, model development, especially parameter estimation and st uh, combined state and parameter estimation sort of thing. Uh, so, that will be model development and uh, some, sometimes you are interested in fault detection and identification. That means, if you estimate the state, I mean you are not doing anything, but simply observing the numbers. And the observing observation of that number can tell us many things about the status of the plant or status of the system. And then it will also turn out to be that uh, there is something wrong in there, the fault detection actually. For example, uh, probably a nuclear power plant if you think about temperature control or temperature monitoring rather. If you do the temperature keeps on rising to some level, then it is probably very dangerous and need to shut down the plant actually that way. So, there is something faulty going on there. So, that kind of information can be obtained uh, from using this FDI techniques, fault detection identification techniques, essentially these are estimation things. 
and the estimation of states of other related systems uh, to collect exogenous information and this is the thing that I have been talking about. The target uh, information in missile guidance problems is typically done through our own sensor. In other words, target is never going to declare its own position, velocity, intention of maneuver things like that. It is, a, it is the missile's job to find out what is going on in the target actually. Okay. So, sometimes this exogenous input which is necessary for computing the command is uh, is done through this estimation actually. So, you can see various uh, various applications of estimation thing and in my view unless we know something about estimation the, the entire control theory is kind of only half explored actually it may not be complete in itself. So, some something some ideas of estimation we must have actually. All right. So, LQ observer design first let us uh, see what is the idea and here we do not really require any random variable concepts and uh, we do not want to go to the filtering uh, ideas in this particular development actually. So, let us talk about some sort of a noise free situation in other words system dynamics is known perfectly and the system uh, variables are also known pro properly basically. Okay. Uh, and the, the output is also noise free, then what do you do actually? That is the whole idea here. Okay. So, an observer is a dynamic system whose uh, whose output okay, is an estimate of the system vector x, that is the definition actually. So, essentially when you talk about why I have got an observer that what you are telling is we have also got some sort of artificial system dynamics and that system dynamics output is nothing but the state vector actually. Okay. And then there are ideas of full order observer and reduced order observer. In other words, uh, full order observer tells okay, I will go ahead and find out the entire state all the time. The reduced order observer tells okay, some of the output vectors are actually nothing but the state information and that output vector does not contain noise. So, I do not want to kind of estimate that, I will just simply take it. And whatever I do not know, I will try to estimate that. So, that is called uh, reduced order observer actually. Okay. And also this uh, remember this uh, observability condition must be satisfied for designing an observer. Okay. No matter what you do, observability has to be there actually. Okay. All right, so let us see this. You have got a linear system plant. Okay. We are talking about linear system dynamics here. So you have vector is x plus b u and y is c x. So motivated by this plant, what you are telling is we also propose an observer dynamic something like this, very similar to what this was this plant is. Okay, x dot is a x plus b u, it is also x hat dot is a hat x hat plus b hat u plus this this k e times y because y contains the output information. So, we want to put it that way. So, this is our observer dynamic where the error x tilde is defined as x minus x hat. Okay. Now, the question is uh, what is this a hat and v hat actually you think that way. Okay. And you can also think okay, this these two things you can picturally represent something like this. This top plant, top portion of the thing is actually nothing but the original system dynamics. X dot is something here, it is nothing but a times x plus b times u. Okay, b times u coming here. That's what x dot is. And y is nothing but cx. So that part is the entire plant, the actual plant. And this plant is the observer. So you on one hand you have got white white tilde I mean this is this will be y tilde actually yeah. because so there is some notational things with respect to what you are doing here. okay this is y head so and then there is y basically so using this error information which is nothing but let us say y tilde if you define that way okay then it, it can be observed I mean this part of the dotted box what you see here is nothing but the observer dynamics okay, this is also x head in our notation. Okay, so this is what happens there. Now we talk about error dynamics. So error dynamics is uh, x tilde, which is x minus x hat. So x, x tilde dot is x dot minus x hat dot. X dot is x plus b u, and x hat dot is this expression that we are, I mean, kind of proposing here. Then we can add and subtract y. Okay, add and subtract this uh, this terms uh, a tilde x and substitute to y equal to c x actually. Okay. All right, so we whatever expression we have here, right hand side we add and subtract this term a tilde x uh, and then carry out the algebra like that. So we have a x okay plus b u which is coming from here and then this expression is there. So I mean I am not going through going to explain all that. It is very clear to you anyway. 
Once you do that, it turns out that this is this this part of that okay is nothing but something like uh, a hat x x tilde basically plus this this turns into x plus this one actually. Okay. Now this gives us some ideas actually that uh, what is going on here basically. Okay, so let's go uh, step by step. So we are talking about uh, this expression first, okay, and this expression. Now, if you look at this uh, this error dynamics x tilde dot, it has to be a function of x tilde only, ideally speaking. In other words, whether x is bigger, u is bigger, small, or x is bigger, small, it does it should not matter uh, given a choice basically. So, for that reason, we want to make the coefficients to be zero. Okay, that means we got an expression for v hat and a hat from here. So, b equal to b hat and a equal to a hat plus k e c basically. Uh, sorry, a hat equal to a minus k e c basically. Okay. So, b equal to b hat and a hat equal to a minus k e c. So, now you substitute back, uh, tell that okay, this is my x, x hat dot because that is how I started with. Only a hat and b hat was not known. So, now b hat is b and a hat is a minus k e c basically. Okay. So, now I substitute that and that a a minus k e c this component I will put it somewhere here now actually and then this particular term y minus c x a turns out to be something called innovation actually. This is uh, well estimated or predicted output actually and this is the actual output. So, the difference between that is something some new information which is which is coming to this observer. If the difference is not there, then it is as good as the original plan actually. Okay. And it turns out that necessary and sufficient condition for existence of this uh, this uh, gain Ke is uh, that the system should be observable. Okay. okay. So the odd observer design, if you are interested in a full order observer, then order of the observer is same as that of the system of full order observer. That means uh, all states are estimated irrespective of whether they are measured or not. Okay. So, that is what you are talking about here. Uh, reduced order observers are there, but we are not going to discuss that because the we are slowly interested in uh, Kerman filter really. Okay. So, we will go ahead and do that. Okay. So, the idea here is uh, to obtain this expression Ke. Remember, we have got a structure already. Okay. A and B are known because that is what the system dynamics uh, is given to us actually. This, these are typically known things. What is unknown in this entire thing is okay only ke actually if you ask me. So this this ke thing is the the only thing which you are interested in designing actually okay, because a, b, and c are known to us. Right, then the question is how do you do that? Now here you can see an, an interesting analogy. We don't have to go through the total thing actually, but the analogy turns out to be something like that. We know the control design philosophy already. And the in, in closed loop control design, this is the system dynamics in closed loop. Okay. Remember x dot equal to x plus b u and u equal to minus k x. So, that one if you substitute it turns out to be something like this. And then the objective there was x of t should go to 0. Okay. And uh, that is that is the whole philosophy based on which we design this k basically. Okay. And we want to extract this benefit out of this uh, this thing in observer design actually. We do not want to uh, I mean kind of go back and uh, re redo the entire myth again. Okay, so, this is uh, the objective here and uh, in this process we know how to design k basically either uh, whole placement uh, I mean what here you are talking about an LQ design. So, we are talking about knowing this k from LQ arc sort of ideas actually. So, we know how to design this k. But coming to the aerodynamics in the observer side, this is what we got x tilde dot after doing that x tilde dot is a x tilde that is all we got actually. And if you substitute for a that is that is what you get. So, if you look at this expression x tilde x dot equal to a minus b k into x and here it x tilde dot is a minus k is into x tilde. Here the objective was x should go to 0 and here the objective is x tilde should go to 0. It is very similar objectives actually what you what you say have similar system dynamics and similar objectives. Again I emphasize the word similar because it is not really same. The difference here is it is this this gain k appears in the right hand side here whereas it appears in the left hand side here. That is the whole difficulty first. 
But however, it turns out that if you talk about uh, a transpose of any matrix, then the eigenvalues remain same. Eigenvalues of uh, this this matrix A minus KEC is same as eigenvalues of A minus KEC transpose. Now, this transpose if you expand it turns out to be like this S transpose minus C transpose KE transpose because this transpose will kind of alter actually. Now, suddenly we got some hope because KE I mean KE transpose happens to appear in the right hand side really. Here it was left hand side uh, sorry here it was left hand side we got right hand side and this right hand side is compatible to what we know in control theory basically. Okay. So, now you go back to the analogy part of it. We have got this is system dynamics and here was the controllability matrix, here was the observability matrix and here you constitute a dual system something like that, okay. A z dot is a transpose z plus c transpose v and output n equal to b transpose z. Suppose you consider some construct something like a dual system here in this form. Then you can construct this uh, controllability of this particular dual system and observability of this particular dual system that way. But it turns out that the contro controllability matrix for the system original system is actually observability of the dual system and observability of the original system happens to be controllability matrix of the original system actually uh, sorry dual system. So, here you got the LQR design u equal to minus k x okay, and that what you want to extract actually. All right. So, control design sense it is x dot equal to a minus v k x. So, objective was x has to go to 0 and we know how to design k in terms of LQR. So, k is nothing but r inverse v transpose p where p is a positive definite matrix and p is solution of this required equation also basically. Now, looking at that side of the story we have got this error dynamics okay, and this transpose is nothing but similar and something like if you look at a little bit this k transpose x like some sort of like a controller gain for this this system actually. Okay. So, this K e transpose we can actually put the formula here similar formula K e transpose R e tra in R inverse e tra R inverse e p where this uh, p matrix what you are looking at is designed based on this required equation rather. Okay. Because now you have to know more that A transpose and C transpose are your matrix uh, system matrices actually. So, using that it turns out that this required equation is something like this. Okay. All right. So, the whole idea here is what it turns out this is something like uh, filter Ricard equation what you call. So, or observer Ricard equation. So, we solve this Ricard matrix from this equation and then compute Ke transpose like this and once you compute Ke transpose you can we have got Ke also. And once you got Ke the observer dynamics is given to us actually. Okay. The observer dynamics we started something like this right. Okay, so, the whole point was to know Ke, Ke is now known actually. And remember we did not go to again the fundamental philosophy of LQR and things like that. Uh, we have simply tried to extract it by constructing a dual system. Okay. All right, so, this is your observer dynamics. So, in other words you start with any, any initial condition x at 0 and run this system uh, dynamics in parallel in, in computer only. The only thing that you have to keep on using is y actually. Yeah. Everything else is uh, kind of known to us actually. Well, there is a small error again. There is some mismatch of notations uh, from copy and paste sort of thing. So, let me correct this. And this is again this uh, x hat here. Okay. Yes. Not error, but the observer observed state actually. Okay. All right. So, okay. Now, this is all about uh, Kalman filter in uh, sorry LQ observer in continuous time actually. Okay. Now, moving on to filters, uh, see the whole idea here is we do not get too much of flexibility actually by doing this because we we simply try to ad take advantage of LQR theory, but uh, what is Q and what is R that uh, remains kind of the I mean kind of filter or observer tuning matrix variables okay, which we do not get a clue of how to adjust it properly sort of thing. Just but it happens to work actually. That's not 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 a problem. Okay. All right. Now the moving on to Kalman filter ideas, which is extension of this uh, this ideas and all that. Again, we'll uh, we'll need some sort of random variable concepts and things like that, which we're going to discuss in uh, I mean subsequently basically. 
but let us see a little bit overview of what is this thermal filter about actually. So, main aspect of estimation if you see it talks about uh, prediction, filtering and smoothing. So, prediction is what is going to happen in the future, filtering is what is happening right now and smoothing is what has happened before. Right? And this typically these three algorithms uh, are based on some sort somewhat similar mathematics, but uh, they have different implications actually. Okay? Especially when you have this uh, this process noise and measurement noise coming into picture and some noise characteristics are available to us, why not using that explicitly okay, instead of relying on simply an observer thing which, uh, which does not talk about any noise anywhere actually, that is the whole idea there. So, prediction, filtering and smoothing are the three things, prediction is what, what will happen based on what I have observed, on, based on what I have observed until now, using that can I predict what is going to happen in the future. And obviously, I need a state predictor for that, in other words, a state model for that actually. And filtering is okay, I have got a sequence of data already, okay, and based on which can I estimate something uh, what is my current state right now. And smoothing is okay, process is done, but I want to see what has happened before in a much more better sense actually. Okay, there are there are applications also for smoothing and all, especially when you talk about parameter identification, you go, you go for something like a uh, test flight basically. So, flight is already done, you have got the data already and come back and try to fit some some parameters. So, why not using smoothing ideas, ok, why should you use only filtering there actually. So, those are the things which you can think about where it is, uh, I mean what is applicable where actually, ok. And it turns out nicely that it can, this particular formulation of this estimation can also take care in a limited accuracy sense uh, the errors in the system modeling. That means, if you have uh, some some sort of uh, system dynamics inaccuracy, you can think that okay, inaccuracy part of it is nothing but a noise actually. Okay. So, in other words, it can uh, handle that that part is uh, kind of uh, much more better sense actually. Especially in structural vibration sense, we typically take about uh, sixth order, uh, I mean even I mean some finite order model then whatever remains after that is actually noise, but it is I mean ideally speaking they are they are not noise really because there is a physics which goes behind that, but you can interpret that as a noise for practical applications point of view actually. Okay. So, in that sense it can take care of limited accuracy of uh, limited inaccuracy or errors in the system modeling actually. Okay. So, uh, it can also be used some in parameter estimation or system identification, I have already talked about that. Now, uh, if you see history part of it, uh, it goes all the way to way back in 1795 with when Gauss first proposed this least square estimation. Okay. And then for a long time nothing happened, people used Gauss least square estimation, even now it is being used especially for static optimization ideas and all that. that way. But then in 1940s, uh, Wiener proposed this uh, this new idea, which is uh, something like uh, filter, and he derived from variational calculus point of view. And uh, unfortunately, it required solution of integral equation, and turns out it is difficult to use in practice. However, the idea content was good, and hence Kalman got interested in that, uh, and he proposed uh, radically. I mean, he got in got uh, quite uh, motivated by these ideas, but he repackaged it in a very different sense, uh, in a time domain sense actually. Whereas Wiener filter was in frequency domain largely. Okay, so, and he proposed uh, something which was readily understood, and it uh, it actually had recursive solution. So, hence uh, computationally it is very less demanding, and things like that. That's why it became quite popular actually. So, around 61 it was a major breakthrough sort of thing in linear estimation theory and uh, the salient features of that includes uh, recursive solution and, uh, and suitable for online applications and uh, subsequently it has been applied in, in almost all do applications of engineering actually, all domains of engineering and even though it was primarily developed during Apollo mission that uh, the moon landing uh, mission actually of NASA. But later it was used for variety of applications, flight control, submarines, GPS, I mean you parameter estimation, system identification, I mean uh, automobiles, uh, you can talk about electrical application, robotics, anywhere you think about uh, Kalman filter has been, has been used actually. Okay. 
All right, so this is the little bit history part of it. And again, if you revisit the pioneers of optimal control in a historical sense, then something like Bernoulli, Euler, Lagrange comes in the in 1700 century. But 200 years later, all these 1900 giants are something like Pontryagin, and Bellman, and Kalman. Kalman has done a lot of work in uh, in syst linear systems theory point of view, especially this LQ design of control like I mean LQ LQ R theory or essentially LQ is a linear quadratic design and various ideas associated with that uh, using uh, controllability, observability uh, and things like that. Many things he has proposed, but he is fundamentally known for uh, for Kalman filtering actually. Also a little bit on Kalman just to kind of uh, see historical background sort of thing. He is he was born on uh, 1930. Okay, in Hungary, and obviously now he's 82 plus actually. Okay. Uh, immigrated in to US in uh, 1943, and around 50. That is where the Second World War was going on actually. That time, a lot of immigration happened from Europe to US. So he was one of that, and then uh, he earned his bachelor's degree in 53 and his master's degree in in 54, both from MIT okay, in electrical engineering. Then he earned his doctor of science in 57 from, from Columbia University in New York City. And then uh, he was actually a research mathematician in something called RIAS, RIAS actually, that means Research Institute for Advanced Studies in, in Baltimore, Maryland from 58 until 64. And this is where his legendary paper uh, appeared actually. I became then Stanford University professor from 64 to 71 and then he uh, migrated to University of Florida from 71 to 92 he was there and then from 90 I mean he got uh, slowly associated from 73 onwards with the uh, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology which is famously known as ETH in Zurich, Switzerland. And currently he is an emeritus professor in all the three places uh, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology again ETH and University of Florida as well as Stanford University I believe actually. Uh, but anyway, so that is the uh, history or uh, background of Kalman and essentially the Kalman's ideas uh, on filtering were initially met with uh, some skepticism Well, a lot of people thought this is not a good idea actually and so much so that uh, he was uh, his paper was not accepted in IEEE and he was actually forced to kind of resubmit it and publish it in Journal of Basic Engineering from Mechanical Engineering okay, that is the why it is actually. But uh, he had a lot more success in presenting in ideas while visiting this uh, this NASA lab. Now, it's now it's famously known as uh, NASA Ames Research Center in 1960. This led to the use of filter in Apollo program, and then it followed in uh, followed by space shuttle program, Navy submarines, aerospace vehicle, various aerospace uh, unmanned aerospace vehicles and weapon systems, uh, cruise missiles and rest is history basically. So, many things were applied after that, many problems actually. During 60s, uh, Kalman was a leader in the development uh, of rigorous theory uh, and during, I mean it is actually he has proposed many things based on controllability, observability, minimality, realizability, matrix Ricard equation, linear quadratic control, separation principle, various things uh, which are very well path breaking sort of uh, ideas basically. And uh, 70s uh, he played a major role in uh, introducing this algebraic and geometric techniques in study of uh, linear and nonlinear control systems as well actually. And 80s he, he is focused on uh, little different ideas on economic modeling, identification and things like that actually. Okay. So, the all these information I have taken from uh, Wikipedia or other okay. and then any of you are interested in like, this part of this uh, has been taken from this website okay. and then this is University of North Carolina and that is where many things are well documented for Kalman filtering actually. Okay. Anyway, about uh, for his pioneering uh, work for various things he has uh, got several several very good medals. Uh, first thing is even though he's, he his paper was not published in IEEE and subsequently he has never published in IEEE also. But finally, IEEE gave him the Medal of Honor in 74 and that is IEEE's highest honor. 
and it has also got uh, centennial medal in 84 where i triple e completed its 100 years it is uh, uh, kind of honored a few people and kurman was one of that and then there is a kyoto prize in from japanese nobel prize is uh, kind of regarded that way he got that is that also then this american mathematical society has something called steel prize is the highest prize in that uh, society he got in 87 and then uh, Richard E. Bellman Control Heritage Award, which American Automatic Control Council gives, that also he has got in 97. And then he has got some Charles Strzok Doppel Prize uh, in Mathematics, uh, I mean, from National Academy of Engineers. And that is somewhat considered as the equivalent Nobel Prize, that was of a monetary value as well. And finally, the National Medal of Science from 2000, uh, I mean, in 2009 from US, that is typically given by US President actually. So, he has got several, several very well credit on his uh, soldier and primarily because of his pioneering contributions and out of that the Kerman filtering turns out to be the most well recognized thing actually. Okay. Now, I just did a Google search today morning, uh, so this is the day of recording of this lecture today and if I just go Kerman filtering that is about some, something like 20 lakh uh, 90,000 results. If I do Professor Ari Kalman, it turns out to be something like 8,75,000 results actually. You can see the impact worldwide. Application domains include aerospace, electrical, chemical, mechanical, image processing, robotics and virtually every field actually. So, that is why it is uh, recognized uh, so much actually. And a rich resource can be found in this uh, repository which is uh, University of North Carolina. Uh, has a good repository about common filtering. There you can also download his uh, first fundamental basic paper actually. All right, uh, so let us move on with the, what is the scientific content here. So, the common filter, uh, the information required and task is something like this. So, what is required for uh, for operating common filter is something like this. You need to have a system model. We should have a linear model or rather a linearized model. And then we should have measurements and their statistical behaviors, okay. And we should have statistical models characterizing the process and measurement noise, and typically they are considered as zero mean uncorrelated white noise. What is that? I will talk about that in subsequent lectures. And then we have got uh, initial condition information for the states are also available, that is what we are assuming. That means these are essentially the required information, and using this information. The task is to estimate or filter the state by processing the measurement data and using the system model. Okay, we got a measurement data. Okay, it's various statistics about that. We also have process model. Okay, typically a linear model. So using that, we are able to. I mean, the task is to estimate the states by processing this. Uh, processing means you, you kind of uh, use in certain formulas or sequence of formulas and things like that to so that you get it a, a, a estimated state information actually. Again, without any derivations and all, let us see how do we kind of implement it. How do you, what is the basic idea here and uh, what is the final results actually. Okay. So, the system dynamics here we are talking about a, a x dot is a x plus b u plus z times w. Okay. That means, uh, this is like a noise influence matrix sort of thing. Okay. This is control influence matrix b, but this is noise influence matrix. Remember, process noise is a physical noise which is coming and acting on the system dynamics. Okay. So, that is uh, the W of t which is process noise that acts on the that acts on the system to disturb the plant actually. And in uh, in practice, okay, so if there is some aircraft is going, there is some uh, gust noise okay, uh, from atmosphere that is a noise mode that is noise input. If you are driving on the road, the, the path holes, uh, the potholes on the road, uh, the road is not very smooth. Okay, so, that also is a kind of a noise actually. So, similar things are there for which describes the noise, but that has an impact of the system and that impact is realized through this uh, this noise influence matrix Z basically. Okay. All right, so, that is what W of t is, it is a process noise that acts on the acts on the system to disturb the plant. And V of it is a measurement noise and typically it is a sensor noise, okay. Y is C x plus V. So, this is the model now, where W and V are, uh, are noise quantities actually. Now, what you are assuming is W and V has to be 0 mean white noise. Okay. Again, hold on a second what it means is white and all that. 
Okay, so this talks about autocorrelation function being a delta basically. That's what uh, auto autocorrelation function is a delta function, and I'll talk about that in next class in a little more detail. But essentially, it turns out that if you multiply W of t with W W of t one and W of t two, it turns out to be zero, and V of t one into V of t two also turns out to be zero, unless t one is equal to t two. Okay, so if you talk about the same time instant. Then this autocorrelation has some value, otherwise not actually. That uh, called white noise. We also know some initial condition of that is unknown. However, we know some sort of a mean value of the initial condition and some sort of a covariance matrix of the initial condition. What is P naught is uh, okay. So this is uh, if you talk about uh, well x tilde, which is x minus x z. If you define that way. Then P is nothing but uh, expected value of x tilde times x tilde transpose. Remember, this is an outward product x tilde times x tilde transpose. Okay. That is a matrix actually. So, by definition, something like this. Okay. So, initially, initial condition means you put x 0 here instead of x, and similarly, it becomes x 0 tilde times x 0 tilde transpose. So, that is the process noise covariance matrix initial condition. That is uh, kind of we are assuming that we know a value. In other words, uh, while mechanizing this, we need to put some values for this actually. And W of t, W t are characterized something uh, like this. W of t is zero comma q. That means zero mean, and the covariance is q basically. Okay. So in other words, q, okay, it uh, turns out to be something like uh, expected value of W times. W transpose actually. And similarly, R is also expected value of V times V transpose actually. So these are all outer products actually. So this is W and V are assumed to be zero mean, okay. and they have this Q and R are their covariance matrices respectively. Q is assumed to be positive semi-definite, and R is assumed to be positive definite actually. And also, this is also a, a little bit odd factor. Now, remember, R cannot be a positive semi-definite matrix. That means, uh, whether the sensor is noisy or not, we are assuming that certain there is certain amount of noise in the system, in the sensor output. Okay, so that is a fundamental fact of Gromov filtering. If you are very sure that uh, the, the sensor outputs are really noise-free, or that noise is something very low, which do not want to kind of account for and all. Then you probably go back to the observer ideas instead of relying on the filtering ideas. And uh, filter does not normally degrade to observer automatically, that is another difficulty actually. Yeah. Anyway, coming back, we are assuming the same uh, estimation uh, or same observer dynamics x i dot is x i plus b u plus k i times y minus y hat, where y hat is nothing but expected value of c x plus v. And then, if you expected value being an uh, being a linear operator, you can separate it out that way. Expected value of C x plus expected value of V, but expected value of V is uh, remember it's a zero mean noise. That's what you are assuming. So this is zero, and C is again the expected value is a linear operator. So C can come out, and this turns out to be C x set. So Y hat is nothing but C x set. Okay, even though definition tells that is expected value of C x plus V. So you substitute it back and uh, and proceed further basically. So that's, that's what the message here. Okay. Now what happens is uh, this this error covariance matrix P of T is expected value of x tilde times x tilde transpose. We x tilde is that I have already told about that. And it also we also assume that P of T is is a measure of uncertainty in the estimate. I mean why assume? That's the definition actually. Okay, so if you talk about x tilde times x tilde transpose, and you take expected value of that, that means it's actually nothing but a measure of uncertainty in the estimated states. Okay. And if the observer dynamics is asymptotically stable, okay, and this case, this uh, noise factors uh, W of t and V of t are stationary processes, that means their characteristics don't change. The current, the magnitude keep on. I mean, the number of uh, W of t and V of t can keep on changing. But their probability density function or probability distributive function dis, uh, doesn't change with time. PDF actually, yeah. they that don't uh, change with time actually. Okay. That's cost stationary process. That the, that means the characteristic of noise itself doesn't change. The value can change. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so in other words, if the observer dynamics is uh, asymptotically stable and these W of t and V of t are stationary processes, 
then eventually the error will reach a steady state value okay so that's what uh, the observation is all about actually okay. now the turns out that uh, this gain ke is chosen so that it minimizes that steady state error covariance actually okay. so you have you have to leave with some sort of error steady state value of error covariance but the how it the idea here is how do i design ke so that uh, the it minimizes not the steady state error covariance thing actually okay. and the optimal gain will will be some sort of a constant matrix actually okay now again how do we design and all i am not going to talk here but the the procedure mechanization of that is something similar so we have got initially you've got this a kalman gain is some we compute that way where the p matrix is computed from this uh, algebraic ricard equation or filter ricard equation really then you operate this observer dynamics this way okay now there you can see if you if you go back to this uh, uh, okay let me go back to that if you see this matrix okay there is no g here okay. so but here the filter it will turn out to be g times q times z transpose you can see that very quickly here okay z times q times z transpose okay so if g g happens to be identity sort of thing then essentially it is nothing but uh, the same lq observer now the thing is uh, in general it gives us little more freedom compared to just simply an lq observer okay. right so the estimated dynamics turns out to be what is given here okay x at is x at plus b u plus k times y minus x at this this vector is innovation term y is the actual sensor output minus x at is the predicted system output actually okay. all right so what is the concept of lq g design then it turns out that okay you um, apply lqr method of control design but x is not available so what i do is i will estimate the state and that let me call that is x hat so now the control will be u hat equal to minus k times x hat really so this will be always available the problem happens to be in lq this is actually called lqg method linear quadratic gaussian where the control happens to be minus k times x hat and x hat is designed from the filter point of view and k is designed from control point of view basically problem turns out to be loss of robustness uh, there is a separation principle by the way which uh, which tells us that it doesn't matter it can be actually done independently and simply you can in other words the control and filter design can be done independently and you can simply operate it that way okay nothing bad will happen that way but the problem happens to be loss of robustness and the remedy for that happens to be something like lqg ltr designs loop linear quadratic gaussian with loop transfer recovery okay but i will not talk too much on that uh, anybody interested can read some appropriate book anderson moore is probably one of the good books for this particular design all right now moving on what is uh, ekf then that's a fundamental thing that people keep on using and when somebody tells you i'm using kalman filter and he doesn't tell you what kind of filter is using what form of kalman filter is using it typically uh, by default it means extended kalman filter actually Okay. and the whole idea here is it nothing but the kalman filter but remember kalman filter assumes a linear model and all so this is actually a linear estimator where the linearized system dynamics is obtained about the most current updated value of the estimated state okay that becomes your uh, uh, something like operating point and from which you will be able to extract this this system matrix actually motivation for that uh, for non linear system models common filter is certainly not applicable so we want more than that and then the question is how to predict the state vector and its error covariance and ekf uh, is some sort of an extension of common filter via linearization okay and it proposes uh, it uh, all variable all available sensor measurements in estimating the value of states uh, of uh, of interest and it uses this three thing it uses the knowledge of the system and sensor sensor dynamics it uses the statistical models reflecting the uncertainty of the process uh, process noise and sensor noise 
and also it uses some information regarding initial condition. Okay. So, using these things it we will be able to compute what is your estimated state. Now, the math turns out to be something like this x dot is now f of x u plus g times w d okay. not a x plus b u it is in general knowledge actually and output is also something similar. And typically E k f has various forms, but uh, what is most commonly used is continuous discrete form. In other words, system dynamics is continuous, but the output dynamics is discrete actually. Okay. And again we assume this uh, 0 mean white noise sort of thing. So, this happened to be something like this okay. and this happens to be something like this. Remember this, uh, these notations are very neat because it gives us a mathematical platform to do something actually. So, delta is this is a direct delta function and this is a chronic delta function actually. Yes. In other words, if i equal to z, the delta is 1, otherwise i not equal to z, then it is 0 basically. Similarly, if t equal to if tau equal to t, then it is a its value is 1 and if it is not there, anything different, the value is 0 actually. Okay. All right. So, it essentially we are talking about is continuous discrete form of EKF and where the system dynamics is continuous with noise input of course, the output dynamics is discrete with its uh, sensor noise uh, I mean sensor, sensor noise intact basically. So, it works in two steps first thing is uh, time of date that means, uh, it talks about prediction and then correction. Okay. So, whatever is the current estimate you predict for what will happen in the future, but whenever the, the data comes in that point of time you tell okay, it is time for uh, correction and hence you do some sort of uh, corrective steps actually. Okay. So, how do you predict from T k minus 1 plus to T k uh, minus is okay, what is T k plus minus and all that actually is something like this. Suppose you have got T and this is got T k, it is a T k plus 1, uh, sorry T k minus 1 and this is T k and this is T k plus 1 let us say. Okay. So, you got something you predict it here. So, this is called T k minus this is T k minus 1 plus. Then you update here from here to there somewhere and then you top of a predict actually. So, this is nothing but T k plus and this is nothing but T k minus T k plus 1 okay, minus. Then again it will be updated and okay, then again it will go like that actually. So, this is the notation here. So, how do you do the prediction from T k minus 1 plus to T k minus okay, this this path what you are what you are seeing here how do you do that actually. So, that is done by simply propagating the state equation without noise. So, you construct a state equation without noise okay, and simply if you know this value you can propagate to that. Okay. Then you along with that you also propagate the error covariance matrix P of t this way. Okay. So, where it will come and all we will discuss later, but then uh, you use this equation p dot of t is nothing but p a plus a transpose plus q where a t is given defined as del f by del x about x at that is more important. So, linearization is carried out uh, at the most estimated current value of state that is what of a t and that is what it means by a of t basically. Okay. Okay. Now, compute the filter gains uh, that means k e k is something like p k minus c k and things like that. Uh, this is again how it comes in all we will talk later, but once you get uh, t k minus it is time to update to t k plus also. So, that t k that is done that way. So, k e k you compute this uh, this entire expression where c k minus is computed at that actually okay, because you have already come here. So, whatever C, C k minus is there you compute using that expression and then you update the state and cost stated error covariance matrix this way. So, x at k plus turns out to be something like this where p k plus turns out to be something like this. Actually. There are different expression for that as well. All right. So, advantage is first of all it works for a wide variety of practical problems and it is computationally very efficient, but limitations are also there and the, some of them are something like linearization can introduce significant error and hence the uh, EKF may not work very well. No general convergence guarantee, I mean it works we know, but uh, convergence guarantee sense theoretical proof is probably not there 
and then uh, in, in it works in general, but in some cases the performance can be very bad actually. So, we have to be slightly careful about that and it also, also turn out to be turns out to be a kind of unreliable for color noise. The color noise is uh, something that is not really white. Okay. In other words, uh, the self correlation value self correlation is not uh, I am sorry auto correlation is not a delta function then then what actually. And then there are issues something like this uh, how do you kind of optimize even if kernel E k f works there are issues like this. Okay. So, how do you optimally place the measurement schedule basically so, how when do you measure it how what is the optimal sequence actually that too we do not know. That is a tuning issue of course. Then parameter or modeling uncertainty if the I mean you are relying on some sort of a model to predict the behavior, but if the model itself is wrong then what do you do actually. Then there are issues of computational errors then there are issues of noise model. Okay. In other words if the noise model turns out to be non Gaussian PDF then then what do you do actually. Okay. These are some of the issues because of which there is a need for uh, going beyond EKF okay. and here you talk about uh, the need being nonlinear systems typically systems are nonlinear. We have got this uh, non Gaussian uh, noise or inputs we got this correlated noise also okay. uncorrelated and correlated okay. what you talk is uh, self correlation and all what or auto correlation but there is something also called cross correlation okay. again we will talk about that uh, in subsequent lectures. So, cross correlation means uh, I mean if I take uh, x, x 1 of t 1 and x 2 of t 1 again the same time but two different values. Then if I take uh, multiplication of that it also turns out to be 0 actually okay. but in general it is not so one has their impact on the other and things like that. So, in that particular case what you do so that is called uncorrelated noise. And typically there are many filters which have been proposed uh, uh, beyond EKF the very first thing that comes to mind is something like linear regression EKF uh, linear regression Kalman filter or something very popularly known as UKF uncentered Kalman filter actually. So, then people talk about uh, H infinity filter then there are ideas of uh, particle filter and things like that actually. And characteristics of such filters are typically they are often approximate ok. And they sacrifice theoretical accuracy in, term, in in favor of practical constraints and considerations okay. like uh, something like robustness, adaptation, numerical feasibility, all sort of things they will talk about. But then you have to sacrifice theoretical accuracy a little bit there. So essentially, the attempts are there to cover the limitations of EK. That's the fundamental idea actually. But here, you are uh, in this particular course, we will not talk anything beyond EKF. Okay, we'll see whether uh, whether UKF can be kind of discussed here. But essentially, we talk about uh, EKF in general. Then we will see whether UKF ideas can be brought in. But more than that, we will not be able to discuss. It's not necessary. Also, many times UKF or um, maximum UKF will do the job. And uh, remember, particle filtering and all are nice. Uh, the the many things you can do that way. But your computational demand turns out to be much more than than EKF actually. Okay. UKF and EKF is not too much order of magnitude difference. This will be a little bit more, but not in order of magnitude different. However, particle filters and all will demand lot of computational time actually. Yeah. But essentially, all of them try to kind of cover the limitations of EKF. Okay, so that's what it is. All right, I think this is all I want to talk about. Next lectures onwards, we'll see various derivations, theoretical foundations, and all for common filtering. Thank you.